Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Maskin, and on behalf of my coworker Sri Aluri, it is a pleasure to offer this video abstract to our review paper entitled Introductal Mimoming Gland Probing Background, Patient Selection, Procedure, and Perspectives. I am fellowship trained in cornea and external diseases, but have developed a keen interest in dry eye and MGD. I have managed this disease for over 30 years and I've limited my practice to this area for the past five years. Obstructive meibomian gland dysfunction is the most common cause of dry eye. Its conventional treatment has focused on using heat and pressure with anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial therapies, but has often been a frequent, frustrating experience for patient and physician. New evidence for meibomian gland intraductal probing suggests fixed intraductal strictures and obstruction correlating to periductal fibrosis first described in 1997. It is thought that the periductal fibrosis contracts around the gland duct, pinching the walls in, leading to strictures and compromise of the interductal space and loss of ductal integrity. For treatment of these fixed non-yielding obstructions, I have found and reported on the successful use of interductal probing. The successful use of interductal probing has been reported by this author and in at least nine independent peer-reviewed academic papers from around the world. All papers have shown that gland probing has consistently led to statistically significant improvement in signs and symptoms of gland dysfunction, including cases refractory to other extensive treatments. This review will focus on the fundamental concepts and literature review of my bone gland intraductal probing, as well as show how to select the patients, perform the procedure, and share personal perspectives. I will finish this video abstract with two key concepts which I now present graphically. The slide left shows periductal fibrosis causing complete distal obstruction of the central duct just above the orifice. This leads to elevated intraductal pressure and lid tenderness behind the obstruction which includes the entire gland. No myelin is expressible from this gland. If the obstruction is not released, then the, the elevated pressure will go on to cause whole gland atrophy as shown on the slide right. This slide left shows periductal fibrosis causing complete proximal obstruction deeper in the gland to at least one mybum producing acinus. Although this gland expresses mybum and appears healthy on examination, actually it is not healthy as there is deep occult duct blockage proximally. This blockage leads to elevated intraductal pressure and lid tenderness proximally. If the blockage is not released, the elevated pressure behind the obstruction will cause the proximal gland behind that obstruction to atrophy, leading to a short truncated gland. Thank you for your attention and please enjoy the article. A new educational resource is available centered on my bone gland dysfunction and probing at mgdi.com. And feel free to email me at drmaskin at mgdi.com. Thank you.